All right, so, so like how we talked about Newman projections, the stability of straight chain molecules, now we're going to talk about the stability of cyclical alkanes. Very interesting phenomenon that happens with these. They are not flat molecules. If they were flat molecules, you would have a tremendous amount of strain, as we're going to see throughout these slides. Okay, five and six member rings are the most common in nature. I think I told you that on the previous three slides or something like that, and we're going to find out why now, because it's based on the, stu on the stability. All right, carbons on the cycle alkanes are sp3 hybridized and have a and require an angle of 109.5. We're going to see that not all rings do that. Like for example, cyclopropane. All right, based on geometry, these bond angles are 60 degrees. Okay, they want to be 109.5. So how can you force these bonds to be 60 degrees when they want to be about 50 degrees larger than what we're forcing them to be? Well, that's the reason why those rings are not that stable. They do exist, but they're very high energy molecules. Okay? So when a cycle alkane has an angle other than 109.5, it won't be optimum overlap, so that it's going to have angle strain. You're forcing these bonds to not be at the correct angles. All right? Uh, angle strain is something called Bayer strain in honor of Otto von Bayer, who first explained this phenomenon. Uh, don't worry about that. This Bayer, by the way, is the Bayer of aspirin, is the one who, he, he did a lot of organic chemistry work, mostly with aspirin um, uh, and heroin as well. He actually uh, is the creator of heroin. Um, but anyways, that's a different story for a different time. Uh, but that's who this Bayer is. Don't worry about uh, the Bayer strain. Just know it as angle strain. But it's pretty interesting knowing that he was the one that came up with it. Um, and uh, torsional strain arises when all the bonds are eclipsed, as we know. So if you have eclipsing bonds and angle strain, you have a very high energy molecule, just like we'll see in cyclopropane. Okay, so cyclopropane, here we go. You're forcing the bond angle to be 60 degrees, not very happy, Fi about 50 degrees less than what it wants to be. So you don't get this maximum overlap. You get these kind of psi, it's not really a, it's not really a pi bond, it's kind of an in between a pi bond and a, and a silent overlap. Actually, cyclopentane looks like this. I'm going to show you. And it's actually called a banana bond. So it, it, these bonds are rounded, they aren't straight. It's called a banana bond. Why is it a banana bond? Because it, these orbitals kind of, if you kind of draw them out, kind of look like a banana. Like if you draw the whole orbital and you color it in, you can see how it kind of looks like a banana. There's other pictures in other books, but those bonds are actually called a banana bond, okay, which is pretty interesting. So the bond angles are compressed. They're not at the optimum 109.5, all right? Severe angle strain of those sp3 hybridized carbons, okay? You also have torsional strain, meaning, or again, uh, because you, it, it, this molecule is eclipsed. Look at these hydrogens. You can't rotate this. You can't rotate around these bonds. So th this is permanently in an eclipsed conformation, okay? So not only do I have eclipsing around the whole molecule, and not only do I have this ring strain, I mean, it, it, we're talking a h very high energy molecule. Th you can form a cyclopropane, but they're very high energy. Cyclobutane, same type of thing, 90 degrees, we're about, we've, we've relieved some of the angle strain, we're at 90 degrees, so we're about 20 degrees away. Um, but you still have these eclipsing interactions right here between all the hydrogens, okay? So not ideal. Um, cyclobutane is the first one where you can actually kind of rotate the bonds a little bit. You can't rotate them 100, uh, you know, 360 degrees, but you can kind of rot ro rotate it a little bit. And you kind of get this slightly folded conformation of the four-membered ring. So it's not completely straight, all right? So here is cyclobutane obviously 90 degree angle here all right that would be flat but this is actually bent a little bit so that it alleviates some of that angle um, I'm not sure why it says 88 degree bond angles I would think it would alleviate it well I guess well I guess it's about still 90 all right um, not quite eclipse but not quite staggered you still have a little bit here I, th I think I think that's wrong. That doesn't look right to me. Um, I'll have to check that bond angle. But uh, again, not completely staggered. It's a little eclipsed. All right. But it's alleviated some of the eclipsing interaction. 
Okay, so the uh, the cyclic compound with four carbons can adopt this non-planar type of molecule, which alleviates some of the ring strain. All right, um, I guess they call it an envelope because it kind of forms this envelope-looking structure. So you kind of get a little bit of the uh, um, eclipsing interactions away. Okay. See, it even see it says here re relieve ring strain. In order to do that, that number should be higher than 90 degrees, closer to 109.5. So that's why that's that's a little weird to me. I wonder if that's if that's supposed to be 98. That bond angle is supposed to be 98. I'll check and I'll let you guys know. Okay, cyclopentane. Now we really got a folded conformation. This is kind of a side-on view of it. So if you're looking down this bond, let me color it. So our eyeball is looking down this bond right here. So I'm looking down this, let's call this C1 and C2. So here's your C1. Notice now we are not quite staggered. Staggered would be like right around there, but we are pretty close to almost having all of the hydrogens completely staggered. Okay. And on top of it, by putting it in this conformation, you, your bond angles now are pretty close to 109.5. To I believe, I'm, I'm sure they're going to tell you, but I think it's somewhere between 106 and 108. So it's still not perfect, but pretty close to the normal bond angle sp3 carbon should be, as well as alleviating, alleviating some of the eclipsed interactions. All right, so the conformation of cyclopentane is slightly folded, like the shape of an envelope. This puckered conformation reduces the eclipsing of the adjacent methylene carp groups. Okay, uh, I don't say anything about the bond angles, but like I said, I think it's somewhere between, I think it's like 108, it's something like that. Now let's get to cyclohexane. Cyclohexane is the most stable chair, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> ring conformation. I already gave you the answer. And the reason is because it can ad adopt this chair conformation. Okay, so what it does is imagine the flat ring. Again, I'm going to try to draw a side on view of the flat ring. Okay, and what happens is this carbon goes up, it kind of has a pucker up, and this carbon kind of goes down, and it puckers down, and you form this kind of chair conformation. That should be a point there. Um, let, let me redo that. These are kind of tricky to draw. There's a uh, stencil that I think I talked about in class, if not I will, that actually has these that you can use and draw them on there. So this is kind of now what the sixth membrane looks like. It's a chair. You can kind of see this guy <laughs> lounging. Every book has this. This is the cheesiest thing, I think, in the world, but whatever. Um, I, I, as long as it explains the, the, the whole point. Okay, so this is so that, that's what it does. It adopts. It's not, it, it adopts this chair conformation. It doesn't sit flat, because if it sit flat, again, you would have a whole bunch of eclipsing interactions. Your bond angles wouldn't be 109.5. In fact, I think they're bigger than 109.5. Um, so that's kind of what they're showing you right here, the chair conformation. And if you look down these bonds, you can see now everything is perfectly, perfectly staggered. Everything's 100% staggered, so you don't have any um, eclipsing interactions, um, and all your bond angles are 109.5. It's the only ring that's able to do that. That's why cyclohexane, most molecules have six membered rings in them because of this. So the chair is the most stable conformation isomer cyclohexane. The chair has no eclipsing interactions. All the bond angles are 109.5. Okay. Now, there's something called a boat conformation. I'm not going to talk too much about this. A boat conformation is where both of the groups are up. So let me see if I draw it. So rather than having it down like a chair, you have these two up. Okay, that it's not doing any justice. This is kind of the best thing. But you have what's called flagpole hydrogen. So th these hydrogens are kind of interacting each other. All right, on top of it, everything's eclipsed. So why would I want to even be in this conformation? I mean, I, it's kind of in between a chair conformation and a flat conformation. Bond angles are 109.5, but everything is eclipsed. In a chair, everything is 109.5, but everything is staggered. So obviously, that's the most preferred. That's the chair. This is the boat. So the boat is, you know, a little bit more stable than a flat molecule, but not quite as stable as, as a as a chair okay and then they have this twist boat thing down here which kind of alleviates some of this eclipsing interaction but not all of it um, so it's a little bit more stable than just the chair it's called the tw I'm sorry the boat it's called the twist boat again I'm not going to emphasize too much on the, this boat confirmation it does come important in very few cases it's kind of the 
it's like, well, if it's not that great in chair, this might be a better confirmation. We're not even going to talk too much about it. All right. So the boat eclipsing uh, bonds result in torsional strain. Twist boat has fewer eclipsing interactions, uh, but you still have the flagpole. All right. Then there's half chair confirmations. This is just kind of a diagram to show you th the energy of how much more stable the chair confirmations are. All right. Here are the chair confirmations. There's a chair. Here's a chair. This is called the half chair. Don't. E I wish this wasn't even on this video on this slide. <laughs> That's the last time I'll talk about a half chair. So here's your boat. Okay. Here's your twist boat. Just a little bit more um, lower in energy, but really much it's the chair confirmation is where it's at. So let's talk about this chair confirmation and where all the groups are, all the hydrogens that are on it. There are two positions. When you put this in a chair confirmation, your hydrogens could be in two positions, the axial position or the equatorial position. The axial are the up and down. These are the axial, going straight up or straight down. Okay, those are the axial, right? The green ones are going around. Those are the equatorials, okay? So you have the axials, which are the red ones, which are straight up and down, and then you have the equatorials, which are the green ones. Okay. Um, there's something called a, a a a a chair flip. I'm gonna go back to here, a chair flip or a ring flip, and let me kind of show you this with this confirmation, or I'm sorry, with this chair. Let's say I have all of the axials straight up and down. What can happen? It's called an interconversion, a chair interconversion. What can happen is that this interconverts. So this carbon, let's call this carbon one, and we'll call this carbon two. Uh, actually, let's call it carbon four, because technically that's what it is if you count it, one, two, three, four. What an interconversion is, is where this part of the chair com comes down and is going down, and this chair comes up. So r rather than having carbon one up and carbon four down, the chair interconverts and flip-flops like this. Again, this is very hard to draw. It's hard to draw a chair to begin with. Trying to draw it on this thing is like nearly impossible. But like I said, if, it, if it's hard to see, um, we will, I'll do it in class. Here's carbon one now, and here's carbon four. Okay, so carbon one came down, carbon four came up. What was axial in this molecule is now equatorial in this in this molecule. This is axial here, it's equatorial here. Equatorial, 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 equatorial. So if it's axial in one chair conformation, and when you interconvert, everything becomes equatorial. What was equatorial here, I'll kind of do a, like a squiggly line. What was equatorial here, is now axial on these molecules. Okay? So all the squigglies which were equatorial here are now axial here. So when you interconvert, whatever it was to begin with is the exact opposite in the interconverted chair conformation. Okay, so they're trying to show you this with a methyl group. So s you see I have a methyl group in the axial position. When you interconvert it, meaning four comes up and one goes down to form this molecule. Don't worry about the boat. I hate the boat. When this comes down and that goes up, notice the equatorial now, I'm sorry, the methyl is in the equatorial position. And see the hydrogen is equatorial? Where's the hydrogen now? In the axial. So everything changes places. Okay? So the most important result in a chair conversion is that any substituent that is axial in the original conformation becomes equatorial in the new conformation. Okay, so they're now just showing you all different views. Um, they're going to start explaining to you why axial, when you have a group, a bigger group than hydrogen axial, that's a higher energy molecule. You do not want your large groups axial. And the reason is because you have, look, a Gauss interaction, okay? You also are gonna have something called 1,3 diaxial interactions, where this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and this methyl group are actually hindering each other, okay? So there's a lot of issues with having a methyl group in the axial position. When you have groups other than hydrogen, the bigger the group, the more you want it in the equatorial position, not the axial. Remember, this is the axial going up and down. 
Okay, and they're showing you that you have these Gauss interactions. And to alleviate that, you put it into, you, you do a ring flip. So in the last page, your molecule looked like this. And I don't remember where your hydrogen, your, your methyl group was in the axial spot. So it was straight down. And then when you ring flip it, it now becomes an equatorial. And you can see now, look, this is complete opposite. We're at the anti-position. You no longer have a Gauss interaction. You also don't have those 1, 3 diaxial interactions, which is right here. All right. You see here, you got the 1, 3 diaxial. Why it's the reason it's called 1, 3 is that if you count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, these hydrogens are three carbons away from that methyl group. Okay. And they're diaxial because it's the diaxis. It's the axis one interactions. When you flip it here, you know, so you ha no longer have those diaxial interactions, w which is a type of steric interaction. So you no longer have steric, and you know, and you no, no longer have the gauche, or gauche. Okay. So the moral of the story is, you want the your groups to be equatorial. That's where you want your groups, not axial. Now that might not always happen, as we're going to see in the next few slides, but we're going to do that on the next videos.